would like to invite Canon from Bankico down to the stage, if we may. Whoops, he's dropping things on the way. Okay, so our next session is around the opportunities for small banks in, uh, in open banking. So I'm particularly looking forward to this. And, um, and I'm hoping that it's packed full of user cases because that is the one thing, and I did say this before, that we need to get that uh, adoption going forward. Um, we, we don't seem to have the IT very slick here at the moment. Hopefully it will, uh, it will work a little faster. I, I wonder if we could do this a, a little bit t together and, and, and work. So I would like to finish this session on time. So could you, t first of all, hold my mic, tell people who you are and what you do. We're going to go off piste and okay. work a little bit. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, so my name is Kanan. I'm from Banfica. So primarily I'm an open banking architect. Been working the last four or five years maybe. Um, started with the big banks. Um, now. I ran Banfico, uh, fintech based in Level 39, London. We help the banks to get compliant, um, provide an API platform, provide a EI DICE, a TPP directory service, all of that. Um, also MCI interface. Uh, also work for Grant Thornton as PSD2 advisor, um, and Berlin Group as advisory board member. So I'm here to talk about what small banks are doing and what is the opportunities for the small banks uh, in, this, in this space. Um, a lot of the time we hear more about the big banks, um, what they do, what is the big uh, achievements they have done and all of that. Okay, so, so I'll probably be a bit, uh, take the sides of the small banks and I'm not an anti-big bank but I think there is a lot of opportunity for the smaller banks to do in this market. Okay, oh, I've got the slides there. Have you got the mic? Oh, I can. All right, okay, so where did it all start? Okay, so the commission. Okay, so what happened? Probably they hated corporates, um, they wanted more competition, um, the banks are too big. And we, we heard about the credit crunch, the bailouts, the public money, and they're back on the block with the billions of profits and revenues. So what's happening, okay? So they want to break this, obviously. So competition, essential, innovation, yes. And then consumer first and corporate next. That's a big shift in the regulator's mindset or the governments across the world. Like GDPR, just a big, uh, regulation, what we have seen from consumer protection and what our data, we used to say data is oil, well, you don't own that oil, it's the customer that own the oil. So it's going in the similar trends and, and they got it spot on, which is in the PSD2 or the open banking, we need APIs. Okay, so that's where it all started and it starts going towards it. And if you see, the banks are too big to fail, okay? And we have taxpayers lifting the banks. And this is an excellent cartoon. I liked very much on the internet when I browsed for it, okay? So this is what is going to happen, okay? But all the big banks making the noise about it and say, we are going to win this. API is an opportunity. I'll probably take a pessimistic view from their side. It's not so kind of rosy for them, okay? The main thing is sometimes I feel that management consultants are mis-selling them. It's all numbers game, right? So you need to go in front of the board and you need to say, I'm going to give you strategy, advice, and what you need to do in the next 10 years. They can go to a small bank and ask, I, I need two million, right? Or five million to give you this advice, okay? They go to the big banks, they have the money, they always say good things, they don't say, Compet PSD2 is here to break the competition. They don't start with that. Because I've been on that side, on this side, um, because of my roles and responsibilities. So that's probably they're misleading them. They are mis-selling this uh, thing, saying you can still keep the crown. And then the consultancy delivery partners, okay? If banks are going to go, like, they, they can easily build a, like the, the speaker before said, we can build a new bank all cost-effective, cheap, and everything. 
but then it's a numbers game for the project manager and for the delivery partners, okay? We did Lloyd's uh, first phase of open banking north of 100 million, okay? The small banks are doing it in, in some of the vendors like us or in, in the market, we're doing under uh, 200K, 100K. Okay, it's the same solution, it's the same APIs. So, and then the banking staff. I'll come to the banking staff later in one of the digital transformation discussion. Okay, so this is something I wanted to, for you to take home. The fintechs are going to be the front office. The banks are back office, just that's it. If you look from the investment bank or like trade capture, all the nice things are all taken by the front office. The back office are just boring, right? So that's what is going. So people say, oh, banks are going to be the rails and the trains are the, are the fintechs. It's going to happen the same way. What bank can do is they can become a fintech. That's all they can do, okay? Whether they're going to be a successful in fintech is a question mark because they have their reputation, they have their biased advice and all of this, so there's not much for them. Okay, so if you look at this, this trend, somewhere here in the last bit, the distribution channel is shifting, right? So you go to a branch, you walk into a branch, you meet people, and they know, if you go to a small village bank, they know everyone, and they give you good advice, and they had a personal touch. They, that all worked there. And then as soon as it came phone and all of this, it's kind of, um, kind of, uh, what's a blurred away, that relationship, okay? And then now they become a big liability now. But in the API, the scalability is not a problem. Monzo want to go Europe or America, they can go. Okay, scalability is not a problem. And then the cost of building the infrastructure is not a problem. 200 people team, you can, bet, you can build the, the, the best of the breed. Uh, new bank technology and all of this. You can get this more customer focused, everything. You can take all the boxes. So that's where it's going. So because we see a shift here, the regulators are, are supporting this change and the technology has come to a situation where we are going to experience that change. So the direct distribution channel to the marketplace driven is going to happen. When that happens, the big banks have to kind of readjust or they might kind of tone down or they might lose customers. But that's, that's PSD2, right? The regulators had been thinking for a long time and they said they got it right. We are not kind of complaining. The re regulation is, is, is waste. Okay, so obviously in that API banking, APIs are the lifelines and you have the ecosystem and you can do all of this partnership, new business model, cloud, and everything. It becomes more, it, it, it's, it's the right tool for the ecosystem, technical ecosystem, or for the business ecosystem. Okay, so what's options for the small banks, right? So we have two, two cycle. We have comply and then compete, okay? Obviously comply, everyone has to comply. Get your APIs out because maybe some of the smaller banks are not ready, not, not some, most of them, but they will eventually get there, okay? Um, because it's a regulation, it's a law, okay? And once they build the APIs, okay, what do they do there from there onwards? Either they can connect to the ecosystem, what is the cost of connecting into the ecosystem? Probably not so much that you wanted to set up a new app or develop partnership or set up branch, nothing. You just have to find the right ecosystem players, invite them, ask them to try it out, and then get it out. And the other option is they can become a fintech. So when I say fintech, there are some banks who are very good in um, giving FX or mortgages, buy to let mortgages, or uh, uh, ESA and all of the savings and mortgages, everything. There are some good banks, okay? So they could just build a business only on that. They don't have to say, I'm going to put everything there, current accounts to credit cards and everything, no. They will just choose something and then say, I got customer. For me to turn into a FinTech, I already have a ready-made 100,000 customers. 
but so banks will turn into fintechs. But if fintechs come in and say, I want to get 100,000 customer, probably no one will fund it because the way we are going, that, that customer base is, will just move or you will lose those customer base in a fortnight. You, you see like 10,000 downloads, 100,000 downloads, then you come to nothing. Okay? But the banks have some insurance there because that's their customers and it's their um, customers who enjoyed a particular product and they want to use it. So small banks can take that approach. Again, connecting to API ecosystem is a lot cheaper. Um, so when I say API ecosystem, these are the ones. You go to money supermarket. I met a couple of architects from Compare the Market um, here in this conference. They're all excited about this, okay? And because the, the small banks can go to them and say, well, I want to publish my interest rates. I want to publish my credit card rates. All of that more in an API-friendly way then you would see the, the uh, what to say, the leaderboards change, okay? So there are some banks who give 2% interest, and if you look at the high street, 0.5 is like amazing. <laughs> That's what they call. Um, compare the market, which, which will then change. There are, there are going to be consultants who's going to advise what is the best thing you can buy, right? Then they're not going to be biased and say, go to HSBC and buy this product which is like 35% interest rate or 40% interest rate. No way, okay? So this is something I wanted to go a bit more in detail, especially from the big banks and small banks perspective. I come from the big banks kind of a history or an experience in my past. I would say digital transformation involves three things, people, process, technology. Banks can buy technology like any of this API management gateways or any, any nice multi-factor everything. They can put process, they can bring in management consultants and say, how can we do Agile? What is this, what is that? There's one big uh, kind of a blocker here is the people. I work with the people and I'm part of the people. It's difficult. I would say it's really difficult. We can never have a digital transformation, trust me. I mean, it might work if you have a very clear vision from the very senior CISO people and say, we need to get this, be part of this, or leave this office. But that will never happen because end of the day, it's too much politics there, okay? Everyone wants a big budget and all of that. They want to show their performance all in the numbers. So some banks, big banks have said, no, this is, yeah, you're right. Well. We are going to build a separate entity called Monzo-like bank, right? So they've taken that approach. I know three of them, like Santander started it, RBS started it, Lloyd's is going to start. So they're all starting that because that's the only solution for digital transformation. When we were delivering PSD2 compliance, the state of the system is so legacy that people who built it are not there. How can we transform? How can we lift and shift? How can we do this simple migration? So it has to kind of age out and die out. So that's the big banks, because they build. But the small banks have good advantage. They just buy, right? So they have, let's say, 50,000 customer. They could invite Terminos or Mambu or N26, any of these players, and say, can you just do this shift? And they're cool into the banking as a service, right? So they got it spot on. And again, it's, it's a volume driven. It's not like previously you invite FluxCube from Oracle or uh, Finacle from Infosys and say we need to build this. The numbers are like really shocking. But then now you go to Mambu and say, I have 10,000 customers. I will only pay for those ones. Well done. Fine. Thank you. Shake hand. Job's done. The migration will happen between six months, something like six months to 12 months. Okay. They got that. But then the, before this, because they got the API ready, they can abstract it as well. Like legacy system, they don't have to connect the internet banking to this, uh, to this legacy. They can go through the API because the APIs are already ready, right? And then with the APIs ready, they can go fintech route. This will happen quickly in small banks if they understand what is this API is all about. But who's going to educate them? 
okay, the market, okay? You can't have a tactical solution saying, oh, I brought in KPMG, they advised us, all of these nice things, the management is happy, we will do, no. The market will push them, okay? People like us will go to the small banks and say, how much, so the innovation comes in the form of cost savings. So we go and tell the banks and say, hey, how much are you spending to keep your internet banking and mobile banking? They'll say, oh, we got this contract which is multi-year and it's running like 300,000, 400,000 a year. We would say, no, you don't need this such thing. We will do it on a SaaS-based white label solution. Okay, then they got it, okay? So that's where it's, it's all going to push. So we go there and say, the innovation is in the form of cost savings and they're happy. So this is what would happen in the, in the digital transformation story between the small banks and the big banks. Let's say the, something to summarize. This is what is going to happen really. The big banks will give you a lot of fintechs and then the fintechs will kind of, uh, what to say, um, they will just merge or they get acquired or eventually it will lead to big, big techs, only GAFA people there, okay? So then we, so we are moving from one big monsters to another four or five monsters. That's what is going to happen. Um, and then in the distribution as well, so it's going to be from direct channel to marketplace. So this is going to happen, okay? And then one size fits all what big banks have been offering people like different so sector people like uh, are you working, not working, do you have your business, are you a student, and all of this use cases, right? Uh, do you travel a lot, do you buy on the internet? All of these things, not available. One credit card does the magic, right? So we just say it's got MasterCard on it, Visa symbol on it, let's do shopping. But in the future, it'll be more personalized, saying do you buy on the internet? Well, we got this offer tied up, so you get that cash back or some loyalty points. And that's where it's more hyper-personalized. So when you look at all of this side, there's not much for the big banks to play. It's only the small banks. Because the big takes are not interested in becoming a bank, right? So then, then you become, there, there is no competition. They'll just say, oh, we got a current account at this rate. Okay? But it has to be marketplace driven. And they are technology enablers. They will not want to, maybe someone will become a bank. Okay, but just because Google becomes a bank, Google will not say, I don't work with other banks. They will, just like Google got an API management gateway or something, they say, it's okay, you can bring other gateways from here, put it in as uh, like a GCP. So they, they, are, they are flexible. And then if you look at the marketplace, again, one of the small players, right? So if you want interest rates um, or savings or uh, loyalty, coupons or anything, it's all marketplace. It's all from coming from the small banks. Um, then hyper-personalized as well. So they're very much part of this, this, this stack. It's only that they have, it won't be ready immediately. It'll take time, okay? They need, so one, they look at each other, the small banks, what I've seen. What are they doing? What are we doing? They're just doing the compliance tick mark. Let's do that. Someone says, oh, I'm going to build something or get into the API ecosystem, then the others will follow on. So the noise we hear today is big banks, that will fizzle out, and then the small banks, the real organic growth of APIs and API economy will come in. So what I would say is just get the APIs ready. I didn't go into any use cases, um, like can they build transfer-wise solution? Well, you don't have to build it. You just have to subscribe to TransferWise. Or I want it to be part of Monzo. You can be part of Monzo, okay? So all of this can happen. Um, on any use case that is very successful in the market, the small banks can replicate it by participating in the ecosystem. So if they get the APIs ready, the opportunities are enormous. And it's not going to be big tickets and big sales. It's going to be small, small nuggets that comes out that will build up the ecosystem. So we are looking for another three to five years for all of this to pick up. And uh, some big players like GAFA will come in um, because they didn't, they're, they're not in now because they, 
uh, we have been hearing about a lot of failure rates, um, especially the uh, Ernst Bank yesterday, he, he was talking about it's like the APIs were not operating, they were all failures. So once the, the APIs get stable and everybody can check out with the PISP or, or, or another scheme, right? So it's not going to be MasterCard and Visa card scheme, right? EMCO, uh, EMV scheme, right? So it'll, it's going to be a lot more new schemes are going to come in the market. And the new payment architectures are all coming out. So it's only for the small banks to leverage all of this. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to take questions. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions? It was a fascinating presentation. I'm sure you have a few. Don't be shy. Come on. You must, somebody must be itching to ask a question. Whilst you're thinking the questions, we are looking for um, our next speaker, Barry. Ah, here he is. We were looking for you before. If, uh, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, so we can finish this track on time, will you please show your appreciation to Canon from Banky Foe? Thank you very, very much.